great pleasure. Dear, oh, dear. oh dear, oh dear, indeed. Liz Truss will go down in history as Britain's shortest serving Prime Minister, a piece of trivia likely to pop up in pub quizzes for many years to come. But Truss will be remembered by quiz goers for more than just her bafflingly short tenure. When she came into power just over a month ago, Truss filled her cabinet with her closest allies, who weren't necessarily the most qualified for the job. Kwasi Kwarteng was given the powerful role of Chancellor. He lasted just 38 days. He was sacked after a disastrous mini-budget of unfunded tax cuts and public spending, which caused the pound to drop to an all-time low. In a humiliating reversal, Truss tore up the mini-budget, backing down on plans to scrap a rise in corporation tax and get rid of the 45p tax bracket, allowing Kwarteng to take the fall and replacing him with Jeremy Hunt. I met the former chancellor earlier today. I was incredibly sorry to lose him. He is a great friend and he shares my vision to set this country on the path to growth. But this former monarchy bashing Lib Dem youth leading Remainer was known for her love of U-turns long before she took the top job. You were a Remainer and now you're not. You supported uh, Brits to fight in Ukraine, then you didn't. You wanted to build on the green belt and now you don't. You wanted to abolish the monarchy and now you don't. You wanted to arm Taiwan, and now I'm not sure if you're saying whether you do or not. You wanted civil I'm servants. We, we do provide them okay. with those. You facilities. wanted to cut civil servants' pay in the regions, and then you said you didn't. Will the real Liz Truss please stand up? <laughs> her last U turn came during her third and final Prime Minister's questions. I am a fighter and not a quitter. She resigned the next day. But it wasn't just a dramatic PMQs that marred her final full day in office. A damning resignation letter from her Home Secretary and allegations of bullying over a vote on fracking plunged the Conservative Party into open rebellion. I saw members being physically manhandled into another lobby and being bullied. In this long-serving Tory backbencher's words... It's chaos, it is unforgivable, it's nonsense. I think it, most colleagues wanted to go now and have done for a couple of weeks. Even at the beginning of her tenure at number 10, Truss could not get it right. She became a meme sensation for her botched curtsy on her first meeting with the new king. And she won't be remembered as a brilliant orator either. The Conservative Party conference provided the perfect opportunity for an apology for a government in meltdown and a party 30 points behind in the polls. But instead, she focused her speech on one big idea. Growth, growth and growth. A word she repeated 29 times in 34 minutes. Just over a week ago, The Economist declared that Truss's chaotic start as leader would go down in history as the shortest grip on power a Prime Minister ever had. Of the five weeks she'd been in office, they said she'd maintain control for one, which they compared to the shelf life of a lettuce. The Daily Star set up a live feed, Truss vs Lettuce, to see who would last longer. Thousands of intrigued viewers watched as the lettuce held it together while the Prime Minister went down with the ship. So it's out with Liz Truss, but who might replace her? According to a YouGov poll, it's not the man who came second in the leadership race, but instead Boris Johnson, who is the favorite among Conservative Party members. And it's thought he'll be running. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> so could Truss's premiership of U-turns end with the biggest one yet? And could Boris return much sooner than even he had anticipated? Thank <laughs> you.